hockey standards, the Hawks' season has been a living hell. So the team recently sought intervention from a soldier of heaven, Bishop Thomas Paprocki, otherwise known as the Holy Gold. We need all the help we can get, and I, sure, I really hope that uh, it's going to help out a lot. 53-year-old Bishop is known for his balance in between the pipes and in life. He's an overseer of 59 parishes by day and by night, a star for the lawyers, perennial power, and a local over 30 no check. I don't want to talk about my own skills so much. I'll talk about the team. We've actually won our league championship three out of the last five years. Now, Bishop Paprocki has actually been a goalie much longer than he's been holy. And so he fears that sometimes the name holy goalie isn't meant to be flattering. If it refers to the goalie having a lot of holes in his game, well, that, that's not very positive. Uh, but holy in the sense of trying to be uh, blessed, uh, well, that's a compliment. A man of such high ranking in the Catholic Church, naturally, Bishop Paprocki's faith comes into play when he's on the ice. Bless you, my son. Bishop, what are you doing? I'm uh, blessing the rink and blessing the players. Oh, okay. I uh, bless you too. Uh, no, I'm feeling pretty blessed. Thank you. Well, oh, Father, I cannot tell a lie. This week I've had two trippings, three slashings, five high stickings, a holding, one roughing, and then yesterday I didn't take out the garbage. The Holy Goalie's impact on the Hawks' play is still in question as his methods, crafted during his tenure with the lawyers, usually work from the inside out. They're quick to ask forgiveness, though. I mean, something will slip out of their mouth, and I'll just get a quick, sorry, Father, and then they'll go on. <laughs> so let's make it 10 our fathers and a power play goal, and all is well, my son. With similar dedication while walking through the halls at work at the Archdiocese, talking about raising money for the annual Catholic Appeal, Father Tom came up with an idea to run up the total donations. I'm asking people to, to pledge like a dollar a mile. It's going to be uh, uh, 26.2 uh, miles. And if uh, people will, will give me something per mile, that'll support the uh, Archdiocese and Catholic Appeal. We caught up with Father Tom training for the Boston Marathon. He ran even in the driving rain. It's a real investment, uh, and uh, it's something that you know I put a lot of time into, and I figured we'll try to, to make it worthwhile uh, asking people to support me. And they have. In two past Chicago marathons, he's raised more than $46,000. This time, he's already on his way. One person gave me the pledge form once, and it, it said $100 a mile. And I thought, well, maybe they're just giving me a check for $100. It turned out I, there was a check attached for $2,600. And then I thought, well, I have to run this now because uh, yeah, I don't want to give the money back. <laughs> So he keeps going forward. The feet pound and the hands count. Prayers, that is. And there's 10 uh, beads on here. And what I do is while I'm uh, running, I just put that on my finger and I say the Hail Marys. And uh, you can say a lot of Hail Marys when you're out there running for several hours. <laughs> do you know how many? Uh, how many Hail Marys in a, in a marathon? <laughs> how many Hail Marys? Well, you can get through at least one full rosary. And I'm talking the uh, all, the, all the mysteries, the joyful, sorrowful, and glorious 150 Hail Marys. <laughs> And if you send an intention, the running reverend will pray for you as he runs for the church. So if you see him on the lakefront, don't disturb Father Tom. Without his collar, you'll know him by his cap. Yes, good guys really do wear black. Now, one of the things I like to do at confirmation is to sing. I'm not just talking about singing in the, uh, the mass parts. You've already heard me chant some of the prayers, but I like to sing a song in my homily. And I pick a song, not necessarily a religious song, but in fact, um, something contemporary, something perhaps that you've, you've heard on the radio. Now, the reason I do this, I'm not singing a song here to entertain you. Uh, probably wouldn't be very good at that. I'm singing a song here to introduce a theme. And uh, so the theme comes from the lyrics. I want to do a song here for you by a Canadian group called Nickelback. 
Uh, Nickelback did the theme song to the Spider-Man movie. Uh, I'm not going to do Spider-Man. <laughs> but I am going to do a song you've probably heard on the radio in the last few months. It's called Gotta Be Somebody. All right, now, as I sing this song, the lyrics of this song, and you listen to them, the first impression is that this is a song about a kind of a typical song, a boyfriend looking for girlfriend and a girlfriend looking for boyfriend. That's probably what Nickelback had in mind when they did this. But I want to invite you to listen to the song in a slightly different way. When the song sings about there's got to be somebody out there that cares for me and whom I can love and so someone who will be there so that I don't have to, to go through life alone, to think about God. Because that's the way that many of the great saints, many of the great mystics describe their relationship with God, similar to a relationship with another person, a best friend, a lover, or even a spouse. Because ultimately, it is God who gives us unconditional love. And it is God in whom we place all our trust. Nobody wants to be the last one there. And everyone wants to feel that someone cares. Someone to love with my life in their hands. There's got to be somebody for me. Oh, nobody wants to go it on their own. And everyone wants to know they're not alone. Somebody else that feels the same somewhere. There's got to be somebody for me like that. Nobody wants to be the last one there. And everyone wants to feel that someone cares. Somebody else that feels the same somewhere. There's got to be somebody for me out there. Amen. <laughs>